Hello everyone. Good to see you. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jarrell. I develop video games full-time for a living. Today I wanted to take a look at the Nintendo Switch 2, or if you uh, read it the way it's written, the 2 Nintendo Switch. Uh, we will take a look at the Mario Kart 9 video that they showed us to analyze just how strong the 2 is compared to the Switch. So I will be approaching this as a developer. I've worked extensively on the 3DS, Wii U, and the Switch. So I want to point out the things that I see as a massive improvement that will really help developers get uh, more out of their creative vision and to do more with their games. So I just want to uh, make sure that I don't accidentally uh, reveal anything that's protected by NDA, so I, I'm uh, very careful with my script here. So the first thing I want to point out is the universal use of physically based shaders. In computer development or com video game design and, and with computers and, and graphics, um, a physically based shader is basically um, instructions on how a piece of geometry, like a character model, how that is going to look visually, how will it interact with other visual elements in terms of lighting and shadows. And a physically based shader is something that's able to take into account reflections from the environment. Uh, if light bounces off other surfaces, that it's able to uh, express those colors in the lighting. Um, and it's allowed. It's what has allowed games to look so much more interesting and engaging because of the more complex lighting. Something that I see here, the lighting on this car here is actually quite telling, or this uh, model here is... This is quite low quality, but if you watch the high quality video that I'll put the link to on Nintendo's channel, you'll see that there's a high resolution specularity map. Now, a specularity map is what tells a 3D model how shiny does it look in certain parts, what are the surface imperfections in terms of glossiness, so some parts, you know, might look like it has uh, less shininess because it's dirty. I've noticed that on a background element like this, it is very high resolution detail, and I will discuss that in more um, aspects as well. But every single uh, g piece of geometry that I see here is using physically based uh, rendering for the shaders. Now this is something that in general is quite expensive. So on the Switch, on the original Switch, you would be very careful with the complexity of your shader. The more complex your shader is, the more demanding it is on the hardware, the more uh, frame drops you have. You get less performance out of the machine because physically based shaders are more expensive to render. But what I'm seeing here is everything is physically based. Uh, you see the glossiness on the um, cart here, on the wheels. Now something, this is a very subtle detail, but it is very important to notice this. And it can be quite hard to notice this, but Mario is actually receiving reflections from the ground here. If you have a look at the bottom of his face, you see it's quite uh, warm and yellow. Even the bottom of his gloves, that means that they are actually accepting the reflections of the ground here. In this section here, you see extensive use of squash and stretch, which is what I was hoping we would see after Mario Wonder showed us such expressive animations for that game. So I'm really happy to see that sort of uh, expressive animation that's just so interesting to look at. Something that is very important to note here is the use of very high resolution ground textures on Mario Kart 8 versus what we see here, which we'll be calling Mario Kart 9. The texture resolution on the grounds on Mario Kart 9 is significantly higher. Now, ground textures, because they take up so much space, they are something that have to be high resolution, they can consume your available RAM very quickly. The Switch had only about four gigabytes of RAM, you know, some of it is reserved for the system. So if you have too many high resolution textures, your game will crash and you'll get all sorts of other issues. So it's up to developers to make sure that they do not use too many high resolution textures. So on Mario Kart 8 and other Switch games, you see that you have to be very careful, and in general, textures are not very high resolution. But you can see here, in Mario Kart 9 especially here, these textures on the ground are very high resolution. And it is not just that they are high resolution, but there is a high number of unique textures that they use. So the reason why 
they can consume memory so much faster is because it's not just one texture that is being used. There's multiple graphical files that are being supplied. You have one file that determines the color, you know, what the actual graphics are. You have one that controls the normal maps, how bumpy the surface is, but it can also catch light and express a sense of depth and shadows. You also uh, have your specularity maps. You can optionally have ambient occlusion, which sort of uh, explains to uh, the renderer how something should occlude light, if it should exclude light to make it uh, look darker in some areas. You can have height maps as well. Uh, you can have detail maps. You can have um, masks that explain where to have details. So all of those textures contribute to just one piece of geometry. And when you increase the resolution, uh, all of those things in general, you would increase the resolution of all of those things unless you want to manually optimize. So you're not just going and increasing the size by a little bit, you're increasing the size by a significant amount. So I would not be surprised if the RAM for the Switch 2 was between 12 to 16 gigs because this is significantly more detailed. Something that is extremely important that I think is the most important that we see here is volumetric lighting. Volumetric lighting is not real lighting like we have in the real world. Nothing in a video game is what it actually represents in the real world. Volumetric lighting is advanced lighting that we have seen in many modern games that create a sense of density in the atmosphere. Light passes through the density and it makes games look realistic, but not just realistic, it makes games look interesting uh, because it makes it look like the air has density to it. Uh, it can communicate a sense of fog or uh, it can be used for clouds, uh, dustiness. Uh, you can see here, we, I can tell this is real volumetric fog. Uh, normally games would fake a volumetric fog with a number of, of different techniques. In Mario Kart 8, what they did is they used just a basic distance fog and that is very cheap to render, and then they used a whole lot of bloom. Bloom is a visual effect that is applied to the end image on screen that just sort of blurs the edges between the light areas and the darker areas of the scene to make it appear to have a soft halo. Uh, I'm not seeing that that is significantly toned down. There's significantly less bloom here because now they have true volumetric lighting. True volumetric lighting is very expensive to render on the Switch. On PC, PlayStation, Xbox, it's not a big deal, um, but it is very expensive on the Switch. It takes a huge bite out of performance. If you try to have volumetric, you're basically cutting out, like, depending on your, if you're at lower resolution, you can minim minimize it to about like 20 to 25 frames a second, but true volumetric lighting at high resolution, if you're drawing at 1080, on the original Switch, you're probably going to force your game to run at like 15 frames a second, and that's just with a lighting. That's not taking into account anything else in the scene. So the fact that this is using true volumetric lighting, where it takes into account the distance, the height, you can have certain areas be more dense the farther you get. You have light passing through it, it creates light rays. So it is just very pleasing to look at. It's very visually engaging and interesting. It's very expensive. That tells me that the Switch 2 is significantly more powerful because they want these games running they would want this running at 60 frames a second, you know, if, if you're running at 1080. Uh, I'm not sure if this will have 4K using uh, post-processing, but at 1080, surely they would want 60 frames a second. Nintendo products generally aim for very high level of quality. Um, and to have volumetric lighting at that resolution, at this frame rate, is insane. I cannot... I, I hope my ex explanation helps you understand this is a massive deal. This is the most important part of this... A reveal trailer to me is showing this sort of volumetric lighting because it is a massive deal. It's what contributes to a huge amount of slowdown on games on the original Switch. So next we also have the shadows being drawn at far distance. You can see over here the shadows are still being drawn over there. You still have shadows. If you look at games on the original Switch, they will do what is called culling. They will cull the shadows so that once an object is too far, it's a certain distance from the camera, they will no longer draw shadows. That is because shadows are quite expensive to calculate and draw. And so to preserve the performance of your game, you would have shadows not be drawn. And you'll notice that very prominently in many games, especially if you look at games like uh, Pokemon Violet or Pokemon Scarlet, you'll see the shadows being cut off uh, very obviously. And that's just something that we have to do on the Switch because 
shadows are expensive. But I see these, I'm trying to see if, if, if there's a cutoff point here that's discernible, but I'm not necessarily seeing a cutoff point here. I'm looking at far into the distance at the terrain to see. Uh, it's very difficult to tell, but over there, over there, that's still being drawn. Um, yeah, there's shadows there, there. This tells me that volumetric lighting and shadow calculation and drawing is now significantly easier on the hardware and it is a big deal because these are high resolution shadows if you look at switch games the resolutions of the shadows are usually extremely low and they look pixely and blocky these are high resolution shadows they're being drawn at distance uh, obviously they can implement some techniques so that at distance shadows are drawn at lower resolution this is a huge deal that is massive um, next, uh, we have even the density of unique textures is very telling. We have so many different unique pieces of geometry. Models themselves, the 3D geometry, they don't really have that much of an impact. They are not expensive to store in memory. They're not expensive uh, to draw a bunch of different things necessarily. But having the high resolution textures, having a lot of different textures, that is what stresses out the original Switch. That's what holds games back because they take up memory so fast that they will just crash your game. So the fact that there are so many unique pieces of, there are so many unique materials, all of them have different textures. And of course, as I explained, there are multiple graphical files that go into one texture or one material. There's so many different things here. That is extremely telling that this system is significantly more powerful. We also have cloth simulation. If you have a look at the flags here, uh, they're all billowing in the wind. This does not look like a uh, keyframe or bone animation to me. That looks like real-time cloth simulation. And that is actually quite expensive. Again, on the original Switch hardware, it's something that you only have a little bit of because it is demanding on the processor. It costs frames per second. It's going to cause your FPS to drop. So you use it sparingly. But I'm seeing all of these flags have cloth simulation, which means that the Switch 2 has significantly more power for physics simulations. That means calculating uh, vertices as they're being affected by other objects, moving other things, the wind is causing the geometry to deform. So the fact that all of those are cloth animating is a massive deal because, again, the Switch... The original Switch could handle it, but not a lot. It took a huge bite out of performance. So having that is a massive deal. It is going to have much stronger physics simulation, and it's it's going to make characters' clothes look really cool as they're billowing and moving around. Uh, and we can have so much more of that in the environments now. Um, we have... Uh, I already explained the high detail density, the high number of uh, geometry and textures, the environmental reflections, but also we have very high poly counts on the models. If you compare this stuff to Mario Kart 8, again, uh, you'll see that the character models themselves are significantly rounder and smoother. You don't see the jagged edges of polygons like you did on Mario Kart 8. So obviously this will be able to handle significantly higher poly counts for drawing. This isn't necessarily a huge deal because the original Switch was, was pretty good at poly crunching. Um, that was one of its strengths. Uh, one of the original Switch's weaknesses was drawing transparent um, pixels or transparent like fog and, and fog particles, smoke particles, fire. Uh, on any hardware that's quite expensive but on the Switch it was actually quite demanding. Um, but the original Switch was pretty good at polygon crunching, so the fact that the Switch 2 um, is pushing that even further is very nice to see because that just means we can have more uh, density in detail for characters. We can have more things on screen and still maintain a very good uh, frames per second. That's the end user experience is just going to be smoother. So that is what I wanted to share with you. As a developer, I'm extremely excited. And for me, I'm personally uh, frustrated... Uh, working on the Switch because I had a number of games that were going to be larger scale with realistic graphic styles. I had those in development um, and there's been a, a policy that came from Unity 
not from Nintendo, from Unity, when John Ricciatiello was destroying Unity and they were announcing all these uh, anti-consumer practices, they put in a policy where I could no longer use the older versions of Unity. So basically the former CEO of Unity forced developers to switch their projects to newer versions of Unity. But the problem is the newer versions of Unity are very broken. Compared to older versions of Unity, the newer versions are way slower to use as a developer and the end performance is significantly worse. So the games that I had running well on the Switch that I had in development that had more realistic graphic styles, I wanted bigger environments uh, with more realistic graphics. Um, now they're no longer tenable on the original Switch because of being forced to update my game to the newer version of Unity and it's ruined a bunch of things, it's broken a bunch of features. Uh, much of my um, uh, frameworks that I've created and some solutions for hair, environmental lighting and physics simulation, all of those are broken on the new version of Unity. So what I'm most looking forward to now is bringing those games to the new Switch because the new Switch will be significantly stronger so that way I can achieve my vision of my games that I wanted to create and I can share with people the games that I've created, the ideas, the worlds, the stories that I've come up with that I've been working on, I no longer have to compromise and say, oh, well, my game's going to have to chug at 25, 20 frames a second at this particular spot because of the um, game engine, um, you know, because of some business decision from the game engine. So that is for me personally why I'm so excited about the Switch 2 is now I get to finally complete the games that I was working on that unfortunately Unity's business decisions made it so that if I were to launch my game on the Switch, it would not be a smooth experience due to the technology. So I'm very much looking forward to this. I am interested in seeing what other developers do with the Switch 2 as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I just uploaded a video where I played banjo and I, I sing a song. It is a protest song for gamers against uh, industry malpractices. So if you'd like to click on that, go ahead and um, check that out. Take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Be well. Game on. Game on.